Hi, I'm Manuel from Bandwidth Blog, and today we are continuing our theme of looking at mid-range phones. Because hey, not everyone wants to spend 500 Rand on a contract every month. Normally in the tech press, we tend to focus on the high-end devices, and you know, anything that comes below that is kind of like a footnote when it comes to these type of releases. Today we will be looking at the two mid-range phones that will be battling it out, the HTC 8S and the Nokia Lumia 820. Like first off, we've got two red ones, but obviously you can choose whatever color you want. They both ship with slightly similar size displays. They both run 800 by 480 resolutions, but the Nokia's got a slightly bigger screen, which we'll get to just now. They both ship with Windows Phone 8, yet on the inside there is a few differences. So let's start looking at what is different with each device. We'll start with the Nokia Lumia 820, which actually does not feel like a mid-range device. In fact, it feels very much high-end. If I did not know there was a 920 out there, I would think this is the best phone Nokia is making. The Lumia 820 has a kind of a almost brittle feeling plastic back. It's not a polycarbonate body like the high-end 920 model. This also means that there's no little SIM card slot on the side and you have to kind of pry the back open, which I'm not a big fan of. On the front of the Nokia Lumia 820, you will find a 4.3 inch 800 by 480 display. Even though it's not, let's say, retina scale quality, it actually looks very decent on Windows Phone 8 because of the minimalistic icons. The only time you notice the lower resolution is, say, when you zoomed out on a big web page or something like that. But overall, it looks brilliant because it's an organic LED and colors really pop on this display. The inside of the A20 is packed with features. There's an NFC chip that is used to, say, pair with something like, let's say, a wireless speaker set. There's LTE that's enabled on the inside. And there is 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi inside, which I did not really expect in this price class. The camera on the back is very similar to the 920's camera, but it is not what an Nokia would like to call a pure view camera. That means it doesn't have optical image stabilization and it's not as sensitive in low light. Image quality is good, color is a bit neutral, but overall we're very impressed by it. With the software inside, you'll find standard Windows Phone 8, meaning it has proper multitasking and the app selection has improved a lot over this time. Nokia has customized the Windows Phone 8 installation, however, with things like Nokia Drive, and proper implementation of the lenses feature, meaning things like city lenses and all of those apps are available as well. So after this excellent offering by Nokia, what can we expect from HTC? So let's see what the 8S has to offer. First off, when you hold the 8S in your hand, you'll notice it's a lot lighter, but it feels a lot more solidly built. It doesn't have that brittle plastic feel of the A20. Slightly rubbery in feel, but it really does feel excellent. On the front of the phone, you'll find a four inch display, which is the same resolution as the Lumia 820, but because of the smaller display, it actually does have a higher pixel density. This display, however, is a LCD display, not an organic LED, so it doesn't have that same pop that the Lumia has. But some people might argue that the color is a bit, a bit more accurate though. Just like the Lumia 820, it has a bit of an irritating SIM card installation procedure. You have to pry the back open to get into the SIM card, which I don't like too much. On the rear device, you also find this little Beats logo. So if you're someone who likes to walk around in the mall with your Beats headphones, this will suit you very well. In terms of the camera, there's no camera on the front, but there's a five megapixel camera on the back, which unfortunately just doesn't hold a candle to the current A20 camera. It's with the camera that you notice the first few chinks in the armor of the 8S, however. Because of the slow one gigahertz process on the inside, you do notice that the camera does actually take a bit more time to actually go through the photos. The Windows Phone 8 installation is also pretty standard, as Microsoft would like to have it, but you also get the sense HTC did not put too much effort into it. In fact, scratching around, we couldn't find too much customization on HTC's part. For example, there's a little switch for the Beats audio, which in our opinion doesn't really improve the audio, it just makes it more bass heavy. And HTC has also added a little live tile in the front, which is not a big thing, but it looks good and you have better wallpapers. Because of the slower speed, we start to question whether it's really a true competitor to the Lumia 820. It has half the RAM, it has a slower processor, camera is not as good, but it is also quite a good deal cheaper. The reason why we compare the two is because they fall in just below the top of the range models. So are they an accurate match? We believe not. The Lumia 820 is actually a pretty high-end device. Even though it might be classified not as the top of the range, everything about it feels decidedly upmarket. So at the end of the day, what is the phone you will have to choose? And we have to admit, after using both of these phones, actually they do not compete with one another. 
The Lumia 820 will cost a good deal more actually after looking at the latest prices, even though both of the manufacturers would like to call these mid-range devices. At current price points, it looks like the A220 is about a third more and you're looking at contracts about 400 Rand, whereas this you will find on contracts under 300 Rand at the moment. In conclusion, if money's not an issue, obviously go for the A20. But if you want to save a good deal of cash, go for the A2S. It's actually a very decent phone. For our full review, go to bandwidthblog.com. Thank you.